So on today's video, we're going to dig into the quarters a little bit and try to figure out um, what the situation is there. I think I mentioned in another video that when I first got this car, I had flipped my Ford Focus, metaphorically, um, to get money to paint it. So I got it painted. It had two little rust spots on the quarters on both sides, and I've pointed those areas out in the other videos. Um, they're right at the front of the wheel well. Very common spot for these to rust, as well as all the other like muscle cars from the 60s and stuff. Um, we thought they would patch the quarters in, but we quickly found out that they probably didn't because they both bubbled within a year. And I've always been curious. I kind of assumed they just ground it down and bonded over it. These guys kept making jokes about how it was dumb to give like a 16 year old a nice V8 powered car because I was just going to text and drive and crash it, but I never did. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if they thought it'd be off the road in like a year anyway, so they just rigged it up. But I think within like, I think it was like 11 months. It wasn't long. It was rusting again, only on the dr driver's side. The passenger side started bubbling up later and it kind of made a C where they may have bonded like one area and that was good. Everything around it was rusting. And I always thought it would pop off at some point, but we're gonna grind into them today and see what we got. If you couldn't tell, I started the video already. I kind of know what happened. You can see the Bondo dust floating around. Yeah, this side, I couldn't really hold my patience anymore. Um, this is where the rust spot was on this side. You can see there's like half an inch of Bondo there um, where I think they just ground it down. And this is like what I was saying, like it bubbled here, didn't bubble here and it bubbled up here. So I have a feeling this is all just Bondo. Maybe I can hit it with a hammer, it might be entertaining, but you can see it's at least been skim coated all the way out here. There's the primer and the rest. So I wouldn't be surprised if when they did this area, they ground this whole thing down to bare metal and worked this over. Cause this car has like seven coats of paint on it. Um, it's way thicker than that normally. So yeah, I might keep grinding here. I don't have any primer or anything to spray this with and I don't want it to like rust worse. Um, not that it really matters, but you know, I don't want to make the already not great situation any worse. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what we got here. This, uh, bit I could pop off with a screwdriver, but I'm going to dig into the other side now. Sound effect off here. That's straight rust there. That is metal. So maybe only one side was bonded. Oh, can I get in here without getting the tires? Yeah, that's Bondo. Yep. Oh, I love that smell. <coughs> I can see my breath, but it's just dust. So that's what we got over here. This definitely rusted way through, but you can kind of see like that's a layer of Bondo there. That's a layer of Bondo there. And I get that even if it was patched, it would have to be Bondoed. Um, this side's not nearly as bad, but this was the rustier side originally. Interestingly enough. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's weird. It definitely rotted through the whole top layer. Um, cause the way these go is there's like the inner wheelhouse and the outer quarters welded to it. Um, the outer is definitely fucked on this side. So this one I think will definitely end up replacing the whole thing. Not to mention all that kind of stuff down there that we have to address. I had to open the door to get some of that crust out of here. Um, yeah, I think the passenger side might actually be salvageable but i don't know if that's what i want to do we don't know what's under all that i didn't grind that side yet um but this isn't that terrible right and ideally if i can get away without cutting the whole quarter out i kind of want to do that that's a big job i think i could handle it and that's probably the right thing to do but if i can avoid it i want to but at the same time we have stuff like that if you start cutting like four or five patches into the quarter it's not much more work just to you know, cut all the spot welds and then braze the roof back together. Um, not that I've ever done that, but that seems more logical to me. Like you don't have to worry about aligning the panel if you do the whole thing or aligning your patch or having weird seams and more places for it to rust. 
Plus, if you cut the panel off, you can clean in between them, which is something I do want to do. Um, but yeah, that's uh, about not exactly what I expected, to be totally honest. This side I thought was the worst side, but I guess it was just rusting around all that Bondo there. Um, and maybe they did patch the driver's side. We, always, we had, like, my dad and I had this other theory that there was two guys doing it. Um, they were kind of running the shop. He knew the one guy who was an actual car painter. You know, he worked at a, the Ford dealer that my dad worked at, a, you know, years ago. The other guy was into painting motorcycles, and he owned a commercial painting company that did, like, all rental properties and stuff. And he owned a bunch of rental properties. We always thought, like, maybe he did the one side and the car painter did the other because the one side rusted a lot sooner than the other one did. But I don't know, it's all in the past now. It was 11 years ago. And you know, if the paint didn't start failing like it did in the last two years, I still think I got my money's worth out of it. The rust thing sucked because it happened so quick, but for a $2,000 paint job that has pearl in it, and included two rust repairs. I don't think that was that terrible. And I mean, they cut a lot of other corners because paint is something you get what you pay for. You can see there's spidering here. They didn't fix any of that. Um, they just painted over it. Like stuff like that, that you're gonna get with these kind of scuff and spray sort of situations. But the fact that it took 10 years almost, no, definitely 10 years for like the paint to start failing like that, to me, that's impressive. And what that is, is probably the paint underneath failing. Mostly on the flat surfaces, like the tops of the fenders, the mirrors, the roof, the hood failed, um, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's it was spots that took on a lot of UV, even though the car was garage kept for a long time. Um, I, I started trying to get it back on the road and then lost my garage spot. And after that, that's when it kind of like rapidly started failing. But it is what it is. It'll all be fixed soon, hopefully. And by soon, I mean in the next three years. So in today's hour, I got this ground effect piece off that we missed last time. It's rusting in the exact same spot as the other side, which is interesting. Um, not a huge deal, I guess, because that whole panel is probably getting replaced. I started working on getting the harnesses out. So the engine harness is fully removed, which really cleaned the engine bay up a lot. That harness is a lot bigger than I remember. Um, maybe it's because it's one of the later harnesses. I'm not really sure. But that's all out. The body control harness is still in there, which is like the one that runs the lights and all that stuff. I got to get that out and all the AC stuff. Um, and then we have a little bit more room to work in there. The wiper motor and the headlight control module aren't a big deal. Once they're out, I'm not going to say we're going to start prepping for paint, but we can start like working on this kind of stuff. Um, like that rust hole we found yesterday. Uh, da, da, da. The ground effects are almost off. I can't get the last two bolts out because this bookshelf's in the way. I don't have anyone here to help me move the shelf. Uh, and because of that, I can't get the door all the way open to get the two bolts. So that's where we're at. Um, yeah, decent progress, I guess. Uh, I did some grinding over here down on this spot just to see how rotted through it was. And it seems like it's not really that bad, but again, that whole thing's probably getting removed, uh, so I don't know why I did that. And the rear bumper is off, but I have it resting on the car because there's a stack of wheels behind it. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's where we're at for now. This stuff right here is the truth. The free all the nibbles. Spray it on there and let it sit for like an hour. Come back and just reef on it. You'll get it out, even if it has been rusting in place for the last 30 years and leaves all these little drops from where you rip it out. So tonight I did some grinding in here, um, trying to see what the situation's like on these spots. This one cleaned up pretty well. There's still more grinding to do, but the hole didn't get that much bigger. Um, I started scraping some seam sealer out of the inside. Realized that's a little bigger. Started working on pulling the harness out, but I gotta pull the speakers and stuff. So that's a bit more work than I wanted to take on tonight. Um, did a lot of work with the seam sealer. There's just no good way to do that. I did some research on it and pretty much everybody just brute forces through it, which sucks, but that's how I've done it before. I was just hoping there was an easier way. I saw some people say you can torch it out. You can basically melt it and then scrape up the liquid seam sealer, but I breathe in enough questionable shit on a daily basis between the powder coating and everything else I do. So 
I kind of wanted to keep that at a minimum because I don't think that shit like cancels out or anything. Um, but yeah, my buddy that does my welding um, has time this weekend to come up and do some work. So I was trying to get us in a spot where we could do some work. We're going to build some bracing and stuff so when we cut it all out, um, we don't have to worry about the body not being square anymore. Stuff like that. But I also got the sender off, as you kind of saw. And this is uh, absolutely fucked. <laughs> I mean, like, absolutely fucked. Like, Ozzy Man Reviews has nothing on this. This is 100% destination fucked. It pretty much went right up to the rocker and stopped. But, um, yeah. I started knocking the seam sealer out of this, and just chunks of metal started coming out. And I was like, oh, boy. This is not good. But... It seems like it's contained to this area, and like this is really thick metal, obviously, because that's where the door bolts to. Um, but I do think we'll be able to kind of patch this in. I'm gonna see if, like, I'm gonna really look into it a little bit more and see what our options are. Like, if there's a way to just replace, you know, replace this the correct way. But ultimately, it's a unibody car, and it's the firewall. It's kind of part of the body, and really, all the body is is multiple layers of metal stuck together. But yeah, that's not good. <laughs> I mean, look at the puddle on the floor, or the pile on the floor. Like, there's all this stuff that was trapped in there, and that's not including the stuff that's in the car that I need to vacuum out. Um, realistically, what I'm thinking is going to end up happening is we're going to end up cutting, like, up to here, like, directly below the hinge, um, probably all the way over here, and then down and trying to cut that out. But if, like I said, if I can take this whole layer off, I kind of want to do that. Um, I gotta scrape all this seam sealer out of here and investigate underneath stuff like that um, but Yeah, it's not good. Definitely not good uh, I'm guessing this is really what we need to figure out before anything else Because if that spot can't be fixed, then there's no point in doing any of the other work on the car um, You know if that effectively totals the car then It sucks, but it kind of is what it is. But at the end of the day, it's also just metal you can always stick more on there. And if we can get that side fixed, then this side is no longer as much of an issue. This actually looks really mild in comparison, uh, even with all this stuff up here. So that's where we're at for tonight. And I'll be back tomorrow to do some more stuff. So I'm getting ready to start pulling the dash out of this thing because um, that will make welding those corners a little easier just because we'll have a little more space to work um i've never actually pulled a dash out of one of these nobody ever wanted to buy one like i've pulled the dash pad i've pulled parts out of the dash pad i've never pulled the entire dash because nobody ever wanted it um so the times i've removed them before to get stuff out of there i've just smashed them with a hammer that obviously isn't going to work this time so I'm going to figure out what I got to do to get this dash out. It's probably going to be a giant pain in the ass, but it needed to come out anyway. Um, for one, I wanted to paint the whole inside of the car with some kind of rust preventative. Um, and for two, it needed a heater core. The dash basically, basically has to come out to do the heater core. And for three, the plan was to put a vintage air system in this eventually. Um, and if the dash is out, that is the perfect time to do that. So yeah, I'm going to get on that now. Using the hammer to get this out normally is definitely way easier. There's a lot of modules and stuff behind the dash that I kind of forgot about. Like, I don't know what that one's for. I'm assuming it's for the airbag. That one's the VSS buffer, which I haven't needed since I did the tune port swap. Um, this is your VATS relay or your uh, VATS module or pass key module. This is mounted on the very back of the dash. So in order to change it, you have to pull the whole dash out. It's a pain in the balls. Um, I found my correct mega shifter shift plate that I just dropped again. So we'll find that again later. But I always had the wrong one because it fell down in the dash. And uh, this is the power antenna relay. Interesting, but it's under the dash. There's another relay here. I don't know what that's for. Um, but yeah, right now I'm trying to fish all the wiring out of the dash. And then uh, I'll keep trying to wrestle it out. It was kind of a pain in the ass. You have to drop the column to get the dash out. That was unbelievably challenging. Mostly just annoying, which made it very mentally challenging because what the fuck? <laughs> like, I don't know if I've ever said it on the channel before, but my 
when my dad started his career as a mechanic, it was right around the time these cars were new. It was like 1987, 1988, and he worked at Chevy dealers and stuff until the 90s when he started doing Ford stuff. Um, but I told him, because I was about halfway done before I got to the dash actually out, and I had talked to him, I was like, oh yeah, I started pulling the dash out of the third gen. He said, ha, how was that? I was like, yeah, it fucking sucks. And he said, yeah, it does. He's like, they've gotten a lot better, but that was pretty bad. And I, everything about it is dumb. The way it mounts makes sense. But I guess to try to reduce NVH and stuff, they just, they mounted the harness to the dash. And they're these weird, like these things and they have push pins and it's just kind of a pain because the push pins just break or it cracks around the dash like when i tried to pry them out it didn't work so most of the time i was like reaching behind the dash to cut those big band cl like clamp things it was dumb so much stuff is bolted to the dash there's probably a better procedure for pulling it than how i just pulled it i basically pulled the whole um the whole shell but I don't see any other way it could come out. The shell doesn't split. You know, like I pulled the whole dash shell out as more or less one piece. And some of the HVAC stuff is still there, but I took some of that out. Like this piece here, you know, I took out separate and like the heater box and everything's still there. And I gotta figure out where this harness is gonna go or how I'm gonna separate it to get it out and out of the way. Uh, because part of the reason we pulled the dash was because we're gonna do a different AC system later. We're gonna make a custom gauge cluster, but then the other thing is we need space to weld. And I wanna make sure there's nothing behind this. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. But I do think that's probably the end of the video for today. Uh, we probably have close to 40 minutes of me doing stuff. Um, Cause this is probably about two weeks worth of work that I've been able to get done. So yeah, I'll be posting this soon. Uh, and then we have the other third gen that we started working on and some Corvette stuff going on. So there should be more content coming, but thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.